All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, glad you could uh, join me for uh, tonight's uh, Tuesday night uh, live stream. So tonight's gonna be kind of a, a loose, fun one. Um, you know, this is gonna be a lot more of, you know, a little bit of a sampling. Uh, and again, I'll get into uh, these here in a few minutes, but um, first, I guess I have to say a big thank you to uh, Richie Z, who's going to be in the chat tonight. Um, I tried to sucker him into the, the live stream, but uh, he just wanted to go in the chat. So and that's and that's fine. So uh, but, you know, thanks to uh, Richie for providing these um, these samples tonight. I mean, these are in today's day and age um, of, of bourbons. These are, I guess, I don't necess necessarily say unicorn stuff, but it's it's really really close to to that based on the ages of these and the releases of these um these are going to be really really uh epic and and fantastic um you know bourbon so if you guys have questions not only for me but for richie um richie was nice enough again to to send in the uh to send in the samples so if you have questions for him you know go ahead and fire away and, and we'll kind of get into it so and throughout the night, we'll do a, a couple of giveaways. I've got a couple of questions for things. Um, got a couple of um, uh, books. So for everybody kind of tuning in right now, uh, 33 books. Uh, Dave over there at 33 books was nice enough to send a few. Um, basically what these are, these are just kind of like a little, like a whiskey journal, like a little pocket uh, whiskey journal. And he sent a few of those over. And I, I kind of reached out to him and said, hey, can you send a few of these or do you mind? I'd like to do a um, kind of a giveaway and, and it fit right in with, with everything that we're doing. Uh, so I was, I was happy to, to get a few of those from, from Dave and uh, be able to give a, a couple of those away tonight. The ones I've got are, are the standard either whiskey like bourbon or ones that are specific for scotch. However, they're, they're interchangeable. I mean, basically the, the, verbiage and everything in them is is going to be the the same so but uh anyway let me go through the uh the chat here real quick we'll see who we've got uh who we've got in here so all right so obviously we've got uh richie z and richie thanks again for uh sending the samples i i really appreciate it uh cooper 57 m thank you for joining good we were chatting a little bit before so um let's see what do we got uh jo from the party source reviews uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, go ahead and uh, and check that out. Let's see who else we got. Chris Beaton, thanks, buddy, for uh, jumping in. Who else do we have here? Dave Selden. Hey, Dave, how's it going? I appreciate it. So Dave is is 33 bucks. So um, and Dave, thanks for sending these. So we're going to do a little bit of a give out uh, throughout the throughout the uh, show. So I appreciate all of of that. You sending these to me. To, uh, to do a, a little giveaway. And at the very end or close to the end, uh, we've got kind of this, this cool like drinking coin um, that has some really kind of interesting stuff. So I'll be sending that out uh, at the end as well. So, all right, who else we got? Most Chun, thanks bud, I appreciate you jumping in. George Kaplan, hey George. Chris, Bourbon Sane, uh, Bourbon Sane, if you guys, uh, well, everybody who's in here probably knows him, but anybody watching on the replay for um, Chris from Bourbon Sane, if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, do that. He's doing some some really good things too. Robert Licorice, I really appreciate. It. I had some of your uh, your bourbon uh, last night. So Robert uh, is from uh, Iron Root Distillery down in uh, Texas. So appreciate that. Uh, Christine Deems, Christine, thanks for uh, joining tonight. Appreciate it. Matt Bailey, Steve H, Mike M. Hey everybody. Melissa Ralston, how's it going? All right. So let's get into. Let's get into this a little bit. So, um, so just to kind of give a little description of, of what I'm going to do. So Richie, again, was nice enough to, uh, to send the, the samples and we're going to go from basically your left to right. So, uh, my right to left. Um, and then the first one that we're going to taste tonight is nowadays, if you can even find this in a, in a bar, it's very, very difficult to, to even find this, but this is the, the 2012, uh, birthday bourbon. So a little bit of information on this. So this is something that um, that um, Brown Foreman, Old Forester, releases basically, you know, once a year in the fall and everybody goes crazy about it and is relatively expensive. 
Um, retail price, it's it's not bad if you're able to get it at at retail. That's that's always the kicker with with any of these things. Um, but so we got the 2012 uh, birthday bourbon, and then we're going to so the next two will be Parker's Heritage. So this is going to be the next one is going to be the um, the 2011 uh, Parker's Heritage. This is the fifth edition, and this was the um, the bourbon that was finished in uh, cognac casks. So that will be a a really interesting one. Bourbons for me that are finished in cognac casks are generally one of my favorite finishing aspects on things. So I really like what cognac does to, well, specifically bourbon, um, you know, whiskey, things along those lines. So third, um, and we've got, this is one of the big boys. Um, this is the Parker's Heritage. Uh, this is the 2012 release uh, or the um, sixth edition. And this was the, basically the, their blend. So this was what they did was the um, uh, the blend of mash bills. I think it was technically what it was called, blend of mash bills, something like that. Um, this is 137.9 proof. And this is blends of their, their standard um, rye bourbon and a blend of their weeded bourbon. So um, Parker Beam, um, rest in peace, but he had put this together, um, basically both of these. And, um, you know, ended up with these. And again, Parker's Heritage, again, this is another one of those releases every year that people, you know, wait in line overnight and everything for, and they've done some, some really, really interesting things. So I like what, um, I really like what they, what they do with a, a lot of stuff. I mean, Heaven Hill does really a lot of great things. And, and especially when you kind of break this down to, you know, the Parker's Heritage release everybody really looks forward um to those so anyway so all right let's why don't we uh, kind of we'll get into things if you guys have any questions again you can at me uh or richie we'll try to do what we can to uh to answer some of those questions but i'm gonna basically be tasting these blind i've not tasted any of them i nosed them for about a second each just to see if i could pick up anything but um i didn't want to get into it. i wanted to try to to taste these blind and and kind of see you know what everything was really all about I, I really enjoy tasting samples and again just to kind of also let everybody know so i've got something that i'm trying to do where i'm getting more involved with everybody within the uh kind of whiskey tube community and you as viewers that if you want to send in a couple of samples for me to basically do what i'm doing tonight i'm happy to do kind of what i'm calling like the um, the sample spotlight. So if you want like your little bit of, um, you know, moment for a live stream, and if you want to join me live in the live stream, I would love to have you, um, you know, come on with me and we can drink these, chat about it and, and really kind of do all that. So being more interactive and everything with, with everybody is, is one of the things that I really enjoy. Um, you know, just the ability to do what we're doing now and share things and everybody be well could be all over the world you know doing these that that's the fun part is getting everybody together and and sharing a nice pour of something and if if you want to kind of do some of these at the end or in the link uh to the description below you can I, my email's there so if you want to send me an email and you want to maybe participate in and send a couple of samples we'll set something up to do a uh to do a live stream and uh, and get your samples uh, on there as well. So, all right, let's see who else we've got in here right now. Lochness, how's it going? Pete McNeil, how's it going, buddy? Appreciate you jumping in. Matt Bailey, how are you? Mike M, how's it going? All right, so a good group of 24 people I think we're showing right now. Let's see who else we've got in here. I think that's it so far. So, all right, so why don't we, I guess, without further ado, why don't we get into tasting a, a few of these? And again, if you've got some questions, um, just let me know. Yeah, tonight's gonna be kind of loose and fun and and all of that. A lot of the other ones I've been doing lately have been more of an interview style, as as most or all of you know. And, um, you know, those are always fun to do and very informative, but these are kind of the fun, you know, we can talk about really whatever we want, so. All right, let's go ahead and we'll get into uh, what's in. 
All right, Guy Davis, how's it going? Glad you could join me as well. So, all right, Pete, good. I'm glad you're doing good. All right, so let's get into the uh, into the first one. So, all right, so this again is the the first one again from left to right. Uh, this is going to be the 2012 uh, birthday bourbon. Uh, this is age 12 years. So basically, this went into the the barrel uh, age for 12 years. They pulled it in. I believe fall of 2012 bottled it uh, proof on this one is 97 proof and the mash bill for this it's technically undisclosed but there have been a little bit of a, there's been a few leaks in terms of what they they feel it is and they've got it listed as 72 percent corn 18 percent rye and 10 percent malted barley so a really kind of in today's day and age a little bit of a standard or typical type of, of mash bill so all right, so let's see what we've got here. And I know Richie doesn't have any more of this one left. We'll get into the into the Parkers that he has both of. So let's get into the uh, into the into the uh, taste of this. So cheers! I appreciate everybody joining tonight. Wow. All right. So right away you get this nice kind of candy sweetness that's there. Not you know with it only being ninety seven proof, you're not getting a lot of heat on this. Even though it's approaching the hundred, so you kind of have to be a little bit careful. But that dark, deep, like brown sugar right away is really, really nice on this. Um, boy, there's something there. Even maybe a touch of um, like the dark fruits that are there. Um, kind of like a heavy, really like a heavy chocolate note as well. Oh boy. Really, these are these are really deep and I would say complex type of, of noses, even or um, um, uh, scent that you're getting. And a lot of times when you get these these older bourbons that have had a chance to kind of air, you know, have a little bit of oxygen and stuff to them. You can get, it can be difficult sometimes as hard as that sounds to, to know something because it becomes so complex that a lot of these, these smells, you know, want to blend together and it can be really difficult sometimes with, with older whiskeys to pull some of those notes. So by right, that vanilla really comes out that really a lot of the classic, um, you know, bourbon notes with this, that cherry chocolate is really coming through. Really, really nice nose. There's a bit of a confectionery type of sweetness uh, to the nose as well. A little bit of that that corn presence, but you're going to get that with bourbon. All right, really, really nice. Yeah, I guess I'd be interested to know, have any of you guys had or are having, by any chance, any of the any of the birthday bourbon tonight? And, and if so, what do you kind of pull out of some of those things? Oh, it has a really, really nice, really nice kind of deep, rich nose. There's a little bit of that leather that's there to it. That vanilla really wants to kind of start to come through on this one. Really, really nice nose. So, all right, let's give this one a let's give this one a try. I've been really, really looking forward to this. And as you can see, uh, this is also, I believe, non-chill filtered. Um, I believe. It's really, I don't know if, if you can really see that or not, probably not, but it's its really, really clinging to the glass really nicely, um, which gives me an idea so far that maybe this is going to be a little bit more on the oily side, which is nice. I appreciate nowadays when companies want to do non-chill filtering, I think by removing a lot of those like the fatty acids or what they consider, you know, impurities, I think you're removing part of what's allowing your mouth to to taste a lot of what that profile is i think by keeping a lot of those fatty acids in there and keeping it more oily that's really allowing it to coat the mouth which leads to a good flavor profile and nice long finish so all right all right there's my buddy mash and drum jason thanks for popping in buddy. i appreciate it and if you guys if you guys have any questions or something, Jason will probably keep an eye out a little bit. He can always send something to me as well. So, all right, let's give this a try. Cheers, guys. 
and to you, Richie. So very, very interesting. So up front, not necessarily um, as sweet. And right away for me, on the right in the front middle part of the palette, a little bit of initial heat up front, not too bad, but a huge amount of citrus on this. Um, really, really interesting that I would get that much citrus. And I don't know if, if Richie, if you remember this or not, if that was one of the things you picked up. But again, there's that nice kind of oak presence that's there by all means. It's not over oaked or anything along those lines. Nice standard bourbon notes. Um, I would say not as um, oily and as viscous as I thought it was gonna be just based on looking at the legs that it had on the glass. Still really nice. Um, but again, like I say with most of my reviews, generally speaking with any whiskey that you're tasting, you really want to give it maybe two, three, four sips before you really start to, you know, really evaluate anything. I mean, that's that's part of, you know, what's allowing you to kind of prepare your mouth for what it is you're tasting is getting your palate coated and all of that. So, all right, let's see who else we got in here. Anybody? Eric Wade. Hey, Eric. Thanks for jumping in. I appreciate it. Whiskey friend, local Wisconsin guy. Thanks for jumping in. All right, let's give this another, uh, let's give this another try. Yeah, so that second sip is now really where you're starting to pull out a lot of these standard bourbon notes you know you get a lot of the vanillas the caramels and you do with any really good um you know bourbon specifically but here's kind of the difference of when you get into these more elite pour or you know elite pours is the amount of complexity that you get um you may not always get super long finishes generally you're getting at least a medium finish but when you get a nice uh, bourbon or whiskey that wants to coat the mouth really well. That's one thing that I really, really enjoy. And and if this is somehow non-chill filtered, and I wish I knew whether or not it was or not, um, it has become through the second sip a little bit more oily, a little more viscous, and is wanting to coat the mouth a little bit better. So this is where you really start to you know pull out a lot of those those extra flavors. Um, the citrus again is still there. There's a nice oak balance, that vanilla, the caramel, even a little bit of a nuttiness to this one as well. But just really rich and those, those brown sugars and the, the dark fruits, they're, they're all there. These are just more amplified and just more well-rounded. There's nothing that's sharp about this. It's just one nice wave of a fantastic bourbon after another. Um, and there have been with some of the birthday bourbons, I've had more of the uh, recent releases than I have the older ones. And some have been hit or miss. Uh, the 2018 was absolutely fantastic. And I'm trying to remember back to it. Um, but it was very close to this from a complexity standpoint. Just one of those those bourbons that you know within a short period of time that you want to add to your collection and drink and share with friends. So really, really fantastic. So all right, let's see what we got. Yeah, so Matt Bailey said 1920s awesome for blending, nothing better. Um yeah, like E.H. Taylor, um, small batch in the 1920 blend. Those are fantastic. I mean, those are both really, really good. Yeah, so Richie was saying, yeah, citrus, yes, along with the standard notes and drinks lower than 97 proof. It does. And, and right away, you know, you might get hit with anything that's probably above 
you know, let's say 95 proof, you're going to get initially a little bit of heat up front. But generally speaking, if you've got any experience with whiskeys, like most or all of you guys do in here, you know, by the time you get to that second or third sip, your your mouth is already ready for, for what it is. A lot of that heat goes away, and now you're just left with a lot of really, really fantastic, um, you know, flavor. So, and this is an absolute an absolutely fantastic, um, you know, pour. So again, thanks, Richie. All right, so let's see what everybody else is saying here. Yeah, so Matt Bailey was asking, 2018 was the highest proof ever for the for the birthday bourbon. So uh, that was one of the, the interesting things. And I think a lot of these, um, maybe if they're going in at a little bit of a higher uh, entry proof that, you know, even throughout the years that it's not losing a lot of proof that maybe it's, it's either maintaining or losing slightly and, and then, and then they're, they're barreling it. So, um, or bottling it. So yeah, that was kind of interesting too. When I, I heard 18 was the highest, uh, the highest, um, proof that uh, it had been going in at. So. All right, so what's a whiskey friend say? I'm going to watch uh, more of these guys. I'm uh, I'm going to try to get into bourbon over the next few months. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good people in here right now that have good channels. Uh, Jason from The Mash and Drum, uh, Chris from Bourbon Sane has got a fantastic channel. Uh, these guys do a really good job. So, um, you know, check those check those guys out. If you want to know uh, more about bourbon, you know, check check them out. So. DJ, how's it going? I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for joining. Dave Kitterman, how are you doing? All right, so, all right, let's move on. I'm gonna uh, put the little uh, whiskey thing back on there. All right, before we move on to the second one. So the second one, again, is gonna be the uh, Parker's Heritage 2011 uh, release. And this is going to be the fifth edition. So this was the uh, 100 proof um, uh, bourbon whiskey that was finished in cognac casks. So this is really one I've been really, really looking forward to um, to try. And I'm just a huge fan of, of, again, like I said in the beginning, I'm a huge fan of what, what cognac does uh, to a bourbon, you know, especially if they give it a little bit of time there's not been many um, bourbons, I would say, that have that have been in a um, in a cognac cask that have have gotten that it's been in the cask too long. So I really think you'd have to leave it in for a really super long period of time for it to become like super overwhelming. But at most of the ones I've always had generally are in that maybe between thirty and ninety days. That seems to be a pretty typical uh, range. Maybe somewhere, some upwards of six months I've, I've seen and, and tried as well. And again, there wasn't a huge fluctuation, but again, I, I really like what, what cognac does to, uh, to a bourbon. So, all right, so let's get into, uh, let's get into that. So a little bit of information on, on this one. So again, this is the Parker's Heritage. Uh, 2011 release, fifth edition. Um, this is coming in at a uh, hundred proof, and this is just their standard uh, rye mash bill. And this was aged, I believe, uh, for the fifth edition was like a ten year uh, bourbon. So this will have again nice age to it, finishing that cognac. I'm expecting it to be a really, really fantastic uh, pour. So, and again, uh, I believe all of the Parkers are non chill filtered from uh, what I've read. And um, that's, again, like I said before, something that's super important uh, to me. And if you, if for some reason you don't understand what non-chill filtering is, you know, look it up and you'll see, and you can try maybe some bourbons that have a little bit of proof to them that are non-chill filtered versus some that are, and you'll see some of the, the differences. I think you'll kind of notice how it coats the, the mouth and, and things along those lines and allows for more flavors to really develop in your mouth. So. All right, let's give this a uh, let's give this a try. And as as I'm moving it, I mean it's it's clinging to the glass everywhere. So, 
All right, let's try this one. Oh boy. Yeah, there's just that that typical, you know, cognac sweet and still there's always I get with cognac a little bit of this like kind of sour note. Um that's probably just from from the grape. I don't know what it is uh, about cognac, but I always pick up a little bit of a, a sweet and sour uh note. And Eric Waite who's in here who is a uh, a whiskey or a um a wine sommelier, he can probably maybe better explain why I would be picking up a little bit of a, a sour note or sweet and sour note, you know, from the, from the cognac, maybe there's some, some relation or something there. So yeah, fantastic. Um, just that, that really nice classic cognac. If you've had anything like that, again, a sweet, sour, uh, type of note. And then underlying there, you get those, the vanilla that's there. There's that caramel that's there. Um, and even a bit of uh, which is a, maybe a little bit strange, but I actually pick up a little bit of a like a peanut butter type of note. So Richie, who's in here right now, um, Richie, let me know what you're kind of uh, nosing on some of this. Um, I'd be interested to, to kind of know what what you're what you're uh, smelling as well. And really, really nice nose. Again, you can tell there's going to be something behind it. Uh, 100 proof on this one. So that's a nice proof. I think when you're right at 100 or, you know, give or take, you know, five proof or so from a normal sipping standpoint, that's a really, really good, um, you know, drinking proof. Uh, I do like higher proof, you know, whiskeys. You just have to be, you know, either in the mood or, you know, ready to drink something like that. So the next one that we get into is going to be um, a really hefty, um, you know, whiskey. So that'll be really, really interesting. So, all right, who else we got in here? Sam Gothier, how's it going? I appreciate you uh, jumping in. Little Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, C918, nothing wrong with that. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for that price, for that between maybe 60 and 75 bucks retail, it's a, it's a pour you really can't beat. Peter White, how's it going, Peter? William Devilar, how's it going, William? Jason says, Sammy Gothier, Sammy the Bull. Yeah, um, and Matt, I would say, so Matt... <laughs> Matt always gets dusty nuts on Heaven Hill. All right, I guess we have to be a little careful with that. But I would say, yeah, like I like I got before, a little bit of that. So that Heaven Hill, I always get some kind of peanut as well. That's probably where the where the peanut butter was was coming out. And again, Heaven Hill, a lot of nuttiness, a lot, you know, beam, you get a little bit of that nuttiness, it's a little funkier with beam, but with Heaven Hill, it's more classic you know, peanut, peanut butter type of, of notes to that as well. So I would agree with you. Alex Julian, how's it going? Yeah, so Richie said the sour note definitely from the cognac. And that's always something I get. I get right away a lot of times with cognac, that sweetness right away. And then it kind of sets in with a little bit of that, that sour note that's, that's there uh, as well. So, all right, let's give this one a, let's give this one a try. Cheers. So I would say right away, classic cognac finished uh, bourbon. And that's one of those, or whiskey, I should say. It's one of those flavor profiles that is very distinguishable. It's, you just, you kind of know if you've had it before, you know what that, that profile is. Um, again, you get right away that nice sweetness from the cognac. And then that sets in with a little bit of that sourness that's there that follows uh, quickly. A lot of the fantastic, um, you know, uh, you know, whiskey notes that are that are there. You know, a little bit of that nuttiness there from you know classic uh, Heaven Hill. Great regular, you know, standard bourbon, uh, you know, profiles that that kind of follow right there. But that finishing aspect to it is super 
rounded out. I mean, it's it's well balanced. Um, it's not overly done, and that's where these finishing aspects on things at times can have a tendency to get like too sweet. And I like sometimes a sweeter bourbon, but I don't always want everything super super sweet. Like I'm drinking, you know, maple syrup or or something along those lines. So. I think that's at times where I like the cognac finish, where you get a little bit of that sweetness up front, some of the sourness kind of kicks in. And then if you've got a good underlying bourbon there, it makes it even better. So that's kind of my take on, on cognac finished um, you know, bourbon. So if you can find some, I would encourage you to, to maybe pick it up and, and give that a try. So, all right, before I take another sip, let's see what we've got going on in here. And thanks for everybody for uh, jumping in tonight. Shows we got 33 people in right now. Uh, DJ, your uh, challenge coin is on its way, buddy. Uh, Eric Gilbert, thanks for jumping in. I appreciate that. George, I know you were already in here. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Miguel, how's it going, Miguel? Appreciate you uh, jumping in tonight. And I think uh, DJ and I were talking. So I think DJ and I are trying to work on putting a little bit of a, uh, a sample uh, showcase kind of thing together as well. So we're working on something. So stay tuned on, on that. If, if I'm not mistaken, DJ, hopefully I didn't just throw you under the bus or something. But Pressman, how's it going? Appreciate you jumping in. Let's see. All right, so let me take another. Uh, I'm going to take another sip of this and uh, and see what we've got. So, yeah. So again, just that that it's it's really hard to sometimes describe a a, a cognac finish. If you've had cognac before, you'll kind of understand what that that underlying flavor profile does to a bourbon. So if you haven't, you know, get into a bar, try something that's got a cognac finish and, and I think you'll really appreciate it. Or try a cognac and a bourbon and, you know, maybe do a little bit of mixing or blending yourself and, and see kind of what you, um, what you like. But it's a, a really, really um, um, fantastic, you know, profile on something, so. Oh, DJ, I'm hoping I didn't throw you under the bus, buddy. Smash under the bus. Sorry, sorry. I think you're just kidding, but hopefully not. All right, so Richie asked about the finish on this one. So, yeah, so I guess for me, a little bit of this, there's a little bit of that, that uh, again, underlying sweet, sour note, um, really nice kind of uh, nuttiness to that. Finishes is probably medium, long, probably on the, maybe the shorter side of, of long, but a nice finish um, nonetheless. Coats the mouth really, really well. That's one thing I, I really enjoy. And it allows for that finish to really develop and those flavors to stay there. Yeah, it's a really just a fantastic um well-rounded um you know bourbon not super dry a lot of times i get a little bit of dryness with um with a cognac finished uh bourbon not super dry by any means a nice amount of oak again not over oaked there's that sweetness from the cognac a little bit of that sourness um classic bourbon notes that are are there as well so really really just fantastic well-rounded um you know, whiskey, there's not much you can say. I mean, I can see why people so far, you know, seek these out. I mean, they're just really developed, well-rounded, um, you know, bourbon. So fantastic. So Richie, on this one specifically, what are your thoughts on the, the finish in terms of, you know, what you get, um, how long the finish is? I'm always interested to, 
to know that as well. And if anybody else has had uh, experience with the uh, with the Parker's Heritage, specifically the uh, the cognac finished, you know, let me know. Let me know what you um, what you have, what you've tried. You know, your thoughts on on that as well. So, I'll, that's one thing I'm always interested in. You know, have a lot of you or some of you had the opportunity to to try some of these? I know these are older expressions. Um, you know, but you know, throughout the years, people have tried things and hold on to stuff and, and collect things. So yeah, juicy. I can, I can see that for me, I get a little bit of, um, on the back end, a little bit of this kind of like, uh, leather, not quite tobacco. And, and sometimes when it starts to dry out a little bit for me, I start to pick up this, um, this leather note with when things dry out a little bit, but it's it is it's very viscous it coats the mouth really well um allows you to pull a lot of different flavors it's just sometimes when you're trying to explain a a, a you know a really really fantastic bourbon versus something that's just a good bourbon it can sometimes be difficult without that person you know really trying it because you can only describe something you know so much it really takes trying a lot of different whiskeys to understand truly how good you know something is and why there's you know not only the hype but a a valid hype behind something because as we all know nowadays a lot of things get hyped up and it can be for you know pure monetary reasons or whatever it may be but um i mean this is classic you know parker's heritage i mean parker beam knew what he was doing so um, just a epic fantastic um you know whiskey so cheers to that yeah so like richie said there is that oak that's there um i do you get that oak and that starts to dry out a little bit uh not over oak by any means again 10-year bourbon you know, finished in the cognac cask. Fantastic. Uh, it's, there's not much else you can say other than, so here's the thing. So these are now on secondary, you know, um, market or in the secondary market. These will all be demanding big dollars. I mean, this could be anywhere from, um, you know, between five and seven hundred dollars easily. So as crazy as that may be, is it worth that? If you've got the money and you can pay five or seven hundred dollars, yeah, it's worth it. Um, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic, um, you know, whiskey, and I can see why people go crazy over a lot of the the Parkers, um, you know, lineup. They're pushing the envelope. They're doing quality things. It's just an epic, fantastic, you know, pour. Especially when you get back into you know, these that are, you know, from eight, nine years ago, um, what can you say? They're just extremely fantastic whiskeys. So, all right. So, okay. So here's, here's a good one. All right. Whiskey friends. So, all right. Thanks for jumping in. I appreciate you having a little bit of uh, time with us, spending a little bit of time tonight. All right. What else do we have here? Alan, thanks. I appreciate that for jumping in. All right, Eric. Okay, so this is going to be uh, this is going to be an interesting one. So Eric says, if the bourbon you're drinking was a, mu um, I'll say a musical or musician or a band, who would it be? I often use different uh, genres of music in my openings because they make me feel like that style of whiskey. Oh boy, um, what style? Um, musician or band? You know what? I guess here's what I would say. With this one, I would say this is probably, let's go a little bit old school. I would say this is classy, like like an Eric Clapton. Uh, if I picked out a or specific musician, I would, if I could pick someone to drink this with right now that was a musician, I would say if I could sit, sit down with uh, Eric Clapton, I think that would be a, um, a fantastic person to, uh, to sit this with outside of, uh, Richie, who was nice enough to uh, to provide this with me. But, yeah, I'd go with Eric Clapton, I think, with this one. Just well-balanced, well-rounded, got a little bit of age to it. It's put together. Um, 
you know, there, there's just a lot of goodness behind it. Um, you know, there's nothing that's gonna break down with it. And that's what you'd expect. If you're listening to Eric Clapton, you kind of know what you're, what you're getting with that. So hopefully that uh, answers your question. Yeah, so like Richie says, I mean, at 139 bucks, if you can get these things at retail, that's the best part of it. I mean, if if you're lucky enough, and and he probably clearly was back in the day, these you could probably get these, you know, back then, 2010, 2011, you could buy a lot of this stuff still at retail. People weren't lining up for things, stuff was still on the shelves, but the last probably five, six years, you know, anything that's got any hype behind it, it's gone. If it may not even ever make it to a, a shelf. So Santa Cruz and Chris, how's it going? Thanks for uh thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Chris, one of my uh one of my patrons. I appreciate that. DJ is as well. And thanks for everybody, all the support. You guys are uh fantastic. I appreciate all the support that everybody gives in uh in their own way, whether watching the videos, whatever it may be. I I really appreciate it. I, I make all this stuff and do all these things you know, for, for you guys. Um, I like to do it. It's a hobby for me and, and I appreciate uh, the feedback. I get a lot of positive feedback. So I, I, I thank you or are thankful for, for everybody for, for doing this. So, and if, if for some reason, anybody in here or watching the replay hasn't checked out uh, Eric Waite's channel, go check out his stuff. He's doing some really cool things. I know he's done a lot of the scotches and bourbons uh, reviews and just, you know, he did a review the other day um, or a video trying to transition into a little bit more of a not interview style, but a little bit more just kind of background on, on some different things, introducing people to different aspects of the, of the whiskey world and not specifically or always going to be a, a whiskey review may, you know, roll that into it a little bit, but providing other information, which is really cool. That's something I, I appreciate as well. So that's why a lot of the other live streams I do is a little bit more of a, an interview style to get more background from people and talk about their whiskey. I, I really enjoy uh, a lot of that stuff. So, all right, I've got to take one more sip of this. Yeah, fa absolutely uh, fantastic um, uh, whiskey. So not much you can, not much you can say other than it, it garners the, um, the hype. I mean, it's it's one of those again whiskeys that gets the hype, and, and generally speaking, it, it it pulls through. So, all right. So let's see. Thirty one people in here, so I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Cooper. I appreciate that. All right. So let's move on to the uh, final one. Actually, before we do that. Why don't we do a, um, a little bit of a giveaway? So what I've got here, again, at the beginning, I mentioned from uh, Dave at 33 books. He was nice enough to send a few of these. I had reached out to him and said, you know, hey, can you uh, send a few of these books? Are you willing to send a few of these? And it's a little whiskey journal, a little pocket size uh, whiskey journal. And, um, you know, so if you're out places and you want to take notes on, on something that's a little bit more um, kind of formal, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's coming through. So it's a lot, a lot of detail in a, in a little small book. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, a giveaway on this. So Bobby or and or Sam, thanks for jumping in. I don't know if it's both or one of you, but uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a giveaway on um, with these. So I've got a couple of them that I'll do. So and the the first two people that will ultimately get the uh, answer to the question. I'll send these to you. One says um, glasses of whiskey and the other one says, I believe, glasses of scotch. They're basically the same. So if if one or somebody prefers either scotch or, or the whiskey one, you can you can let me know at um, at that time. So yeah, so Dave Selden is the owner, uh, the one who uh, produces these. You can go to the, the website. I'll have that linked in the description below. Uh, I keep it on on really all of my videos just because it's one of those things that I think a lot of people are are interested in. And, um, you know, a lot, all of us like being out places and taking notes on things. And it's a, a cool little kind of pocket size um, thing. So 
again, I'll have Dave, I'll have the, um, uh, yeah, so I know Dave said the there's a little slight, slight difference in the vocab between the whiskey and the scotch one. But like I said, if, if somebody prefers one over the other, then, then let me know and, and I'll try to, you know, work with you guys on that. So, all right. So the first two that will get the answer uh, correct, I'll send uh, one of these little uh, booklets to you. So this has to do with a recent video uh, that I produced. And I guess if somebody can give me, I guess, as specific as possible, what my most recent review of was, um, the first two that answer that one, I will, uh, I'll send you this. So go ahead and put in there in terms of what that, uh, my most recent review of what type of whiskey um, was that. We'll see if anybody watches my videos in here at all. So, all right. And as soon as they kind of pop up, I'll uh, I'll let I'll let everybody know. So, all right. So we've got two. So right right now. My most recent one was the uh, Widow Jane. So Pete, uh, I've got in here as the Widow Jane and I believe Matt Bailey. So I'll double check it, but it looks like so far Pete and uh, Matt. So uh, at some point, one of you guys send me an email. Um, there's a, an email linked in the description below. You can send me an email with your address and everything and I'll send it to you. Now, do each one of you, does it matter which one gets what, or does somebody prefer one that's um, scotch or one that's just uh, whiskey? So you guys can can let me know that uh, as well, so. Yeah, so you guys can send me a, you guys can send me an email. I'll try to do my best to, uh, to send you um, what I've got. So this is the, the kind of standard um, like whiskey one. All right. So, so Pete said whiskey and Matt, um, oh, Matt, you guys both said, all right, so you guys are going to have to, I'm going to, I'll have to see what I can do. Um, I might have another one that I can send you that are both whiskey. I'll figure something out. Anyway, you guys send me a, um, uh, an email at, uh, my bourbon journey zero one, at gmail.com again it'll be linked in the description below you can send me or however you want to get in contact with me you can through other social media stuff as well just send me your uh, email and I will mail you guys a, um, a little booklet and then at the end of the show uh, I'll give away this this kind of cool coin that uh, that Dave puts together as well so all right so what else do we have here I whiskey she wines. So if you guys, uh, every, anybody in here for whatever reason are watching the playback, if you haven't watched those two and uh, you like good, um, <laughs> you like good whiskey reviews with some uh, some comedy behind it, those two do a fantastic job. So Bobby and Sam, you guys are are really doing a fantastic job. So really fun to watch. All right, so. All right, so let's move on to the uh, the third and final one. So we're approaching the 50 minute mark. I try to keep these things around an hour or so. So we'll we'll see what we've got. But I, what I wanted to do was um, again go through these and give each one of them their their proper amount of time. And um, and this one is going to be one of the more sought after Parker's Heritage. And we did these in this order from proof basically um, to to not really you know. Uh, try to like burn out the palate. So what this one is, so this again is the 2012 release, Parker's Heritage 6th edition, and this is the blend of mash bills. So this is their standard rye mash bill and their weeded mash bill that are blended and you end up with, with what this is. Um, these were, so the rye comes from uh, basically Rick House R and the weeded bourbon comes from the Rick House T. So we've got two completely separate areas blended together, and this one is cast strength, um, non-chill filter, and comes in at a hefty 137.9 proof or 68.95% uh, ABV. So, 
Yeah, absolutely, Bobby, Sam. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. So, And Dave, thanks again for sending the books. I know these guys will really, really appreciate this. So. All right, so let's give the um, let's give the, um, the the 2012 release the Parker's um, uh, blended mash bills. Let's give this a uh, a nose. Oof. Boy, so right away, again, I've I've I allowed these to open up a little bit, and as we've been sitting, I mean, they've been open for almost an hour now, a little bit more with this one, but that just that that vapor that's there is not a lot of it to it. Still at 137 proof, that's something that you've got to be very, very careful with. So, yeah. So right away for me on the nose, um, it's a lot of it's a lot of a cherry type of note that I get. Uh, Richie, I don't know what you're getting on on that, but I get a lot of cherry, like that dark fruit, specifically cherry on this one. I'm not picking up a lot of the the weeded part of it. Yeah, a lot of the dark fruits are really wanting to kind of come through. That vanilla kind of that vanilla note really starts to come through for me on this one. Yeah, even a really nice kind of chocolate note to it as well. Um, I mean, you can see this has got some age to it as well. The color that's there, absolutely fantastic. Non-chill filtered, really sticking to the glass really, really nicely. Yeah, just, just a really nice nose so far. Uh, really nice kind of like leather tobacco type note to it. Still some sweetness that's there. That nuttiness there, that classic kind of, you know, uh, Heaven Hill nuttiness is there. Oh, that cherry that's on this is crazy. All right, let's see. Yeah, so I get a lot of that. Toffee is not one thing I always uh, pick out on something just because I'm not overly familiar with the, the smell of toffee. Maybe if I smelled it, which I probably should, maybe I would pick that up a little bit more. But definitely the dark fruits, the chocolate, that cherry that's there. Yeah, I can see where like maybe that coffee note, like a coffee bean, like an espresso type of bean. Really, really nice. Really nice. So, all right. Really, really excited to, to try this. So cheers to all of you. Cheers, Richie. So, so right away, as you can tell, 137.9 proof. Um, that is one you've got to be extremely like careful with. I know a lot of times, you know, that second, third sip, you really start to develop, you know, what's there. Um, but maybe between those sips, you kind of take it a little bit easy. You don't want to fry out your you know, burn out your palate with, you know, that high proof. And that can happen really, really easily if you start to take these in too quickly. Um, you'll start to lose all kinds of notes. It'll just fry your, your palate. You won't get really much of anything and it'll just taste, you know, hot. So it's one of those things you've got to be really, really careful with. Thanks, Lochness. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, so with this one, it is, there's some, definitely some tobacco, that coffee bean espresso type of note to it, dark chocolate, dark cherries, just dark fruits. Um, you know, so far in terms of like the nose of something, I mean, this is, again, it's high proof, but the complexity of this is just extremely, it's just outstanding. I mean, it's just really, really, um, you know, a fantastic uh, nose, but all right, let's go back in for a, uh, a second sip on this one. Cheers.
the the vanilla, the caramel. Um, for me, I would say right away. It's probably one of the, in, in all honesty, it's probably one of the better pours easily in the top five that I think I've probably ever had. And that's just based on two sips. This isn't even allowing or maybe even trying with water. Generally, I don't add water to, to anything, but the complexity of this, the dark fruits, that chocolate, the, the, the kind of the, the cocoa, um, you know, to it. Even a slight amount of like citrus, like like orange peel that's there as well, I get. Not overly dry, slight bit of nuttiness, not that much on the palate with this one. But that chocolate and dark fruit, specifically the cherry, are incredible. Um, it's... It's unbelievable. And this is like, like Richie just said, like, this is one of those things with, if you had two ounces of this, I mean, you could take a, a while with this one just to allow it to not only open up, but to just take your time with it and allow all of those flavors to just kind of, you know, explode in your mouth. I mean, it's just, it's so viscous and mouth coating that the finish on it is is forever it's a nice long finish but that citrus and chocolate and leather a little bit of tobacco not not heavy tobacco by any means are all there those classic um bourbon notes now if i was tasting this i wouldn't necessarily know that there was either much or any like weeded bourbon that was that was in there it's not i'm not getting a lot of that that weeded profile as much and richie i don't know if if um if you get that or not and maybe just because of the high proof and that spice that's there the barrel uh influence that's there maybe you know washes away some of the the weeded profile of it but that spice that's there is really, really, um, you know, fantastic. So, and like DJ said, I mean, it, it is, it, it, it sounds fantastic and it, it is fantastic. It, it's an incredible pour. I mean, if anybody from a reference standpoint ever has the opportunity to specifically try the 2012 release Parker's Heritage sixth edition, um, you know, do it. I would imagine it's probably going to be um, fairly expensive for the most part. But if if you can get an ounce or even an ounce and a half or whatever, just to try that, you know, that's something that you're going to want to take take your time with. Um, this high proof and just as complex as it is, this is what every person who enjoys a great bourbon like wants and and I I'm I don't want to say it doesn't drink like 137 or 138 proof it's 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 you know hot but not like that I mean it's drinking more along the lines of I would say 110 115 proof again which is still you know up there but still enjoyable it's not like drinking you know gasoline or anything like that it's just it's a full bodied um you know whiskey and i guess one thing i would probably and i i probably will try it i don't know if anybody out there are um cigar aficionados or enjoy a good cigar but this would pair well with a really really nice like robust even medium to to heavy bodied um, cigar. So that's probably as the weather for me here in Wisconsin gets a little nicer. That's probably something I'll, I'll hold on to a little bit of um, just to be able to maybe sit down and, and, and enjoy that because you, you want to take your time with, with something like this. This is not a, a bourbon that, um, that needs to be rushed like whatsoever. So it's, it's an incredible, um, you know, whiskey and, 
I, I wish that I could share all, a lot of these things with, with everybody, but there's only so much of it. And to get the opportunity to try this, you know, Richie, thank you very much for, uh, for sending that. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that's the thing I, what I wanted to try to do is maybe start doing, if anybody's interested at all, maybe try to do some, some whiskey bourbon, um, you know, cigar pairings. I don't know if anybody would be interested in or cares about that, but as the weather gets nice, it's nice to sit outside and, um, have a good cigar with a really nice bourbon and, um, you know, just, just enjoy the, the day or evening or whatever. So, all right, let me take another sip of this. Yeah, so like Richie said, so Dan uh, Dan Trout, or as we call him, Dusty Dan Trout, had them as well, and he he apparently went crazy over them too. And I believe Jason Bash and Drum, I think, had them too, and I think he, I think he really liked it, or maybe he just had the the cognac was amazing, and it was. I mean, these are absolutely fantastic pours, all of them in their own their own right. But for me, like it's, it's number one and then one A and one B. I mean, these are all fantastic, but if you're going to really sit down and take your time with something for, you know, what a lot of us I think enjoy, um, that would be an, an absolutely incredible, uh, pour for, for anybody. So hopefully if anyone has a, an opportunity to, to try that, I, I hope you, um, I hope you do do try that. So, all right. So, all right. So, Sam, you'd be interested in maybe some uh, some cigar and, and bourbon pairings. And I and I thought it's one of those things where if you're you know out in the in the evening or whatever it is, and you want to do a, a quick live, I shouldn't even say quick, but if you want to do a live stream where you put a little bit of a a pairing together, if if anybody. Um, uh, you know, was interested in that, maybe we could do something. It'd be probably more impromptu than, than anything, but um, if anyone's interested. All right, so DJ asked about the, the Curacao, uh, orange Curacao version. I had it, um, it was super orangey to me. To me, that was one of those things that with orange, you have to be a little bit careful with it. It can be a dominant type of flavor. And for me, it was just a little bit too much. It got real um, like orange uh, syrupy uh, for me. Now, maybe there's other people who really, really enjoy the orange um, you know, profile, but I think it was just so dominant for me that, that it took away from the underlying quality of the bourbon that was there. And I never want any of the finishing aspect to necessarily outshine the bourbon that's there you want those two to to blend and work well to together and and i think again that's what the uh the parker's heritage that was finished in the the cognac casks i think that's i think that's exactly what that did they pulled that to me at the at the right time so all right let's see what else so hopefully that answers your question so um for 150 for the orange curacao version i don't know i i would pass i wouldn't pay 150 for it but maybe that's one of those things and i'm assuming with it sitting there for 150 it's been there for a little while so if you wanted to try it you know if you could find it somewhere else or, or get a sample from someone and try it to see whether or not you're willing to spend 150 bucks for it um you know you can you can do that so all right, Peter, so nice Cohiba Robusto. So I would say with something like that, if you're doing a cigar pairing and you can get something that's more, um, if it's at least medium to full bodied, I think if you start getting into the, like a Knob Creek, like a single barrel, 120 proof, perfect, perfect blend right there, if you can get that. So I know some of the Robustos aren't always, um, you know, full body, they can be, you know, medium, you know, light, so you want something that's gonna be that's gonna hold up to to the the whiskey that you're drinking. So 
Yeah, most John. Yep, a cigar on the porch or deck uh, with Dram works. Yep, that's good. So, well, I'll let everybody know, and we'll see if if anybody's uh, you know interested in that. So. Yeah. So okay. So Sam says the Knob Creek twenty fifth anniversary for one fifty. Um, yeah, it's it's a great. I mean, I I love. I love Knob Creek. One of our local places just did a a relatively local uh, store pick that was just full of flavor and you know one that would be great to just regular sip on or enjoy it with a cigar or whatever you want to do. Absolutely fantastic. And Richie, yes, thank you very much. I I really really enjoyed um, this. Um, you know, these samples, I mean, these were absolutely fantastic and ones that I would say, unfortunately, most people aren't going to have the ability to get unless you're at a really high end whiskey bar and um, and they've got all kinds of things. Uh, this is maybe about where you're going to get these types of pours, especially these these ages that are that are on these. These are the older expressions in, in terms of, you know, nowadays. So absolutely fantastic. So. All right. Does anybody have any other questions uh, before I do the uh, the final uh, the final giveaway? So, all right. So, and again, Richie, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate you uh, sending these and putting these things to uh, together. So, um, you know. So, anyway. All right. So. Uh, gave away a couple of little booklets. Again, again, thanks to uh, Dave from 33 Books. I'll have him linked in the description below. Um, his company, you can check them out. And they're really affordable. I think they're like five or six bucks for each one of these things. And there's all kinds of them. If if whiskey, for some reason, whiskey or scotch isn't your thing, they've got all kinds of um, tasting um, uh, profile books there for everything. Wine, coffee, tea, everything. So really, really cool stuff. So check out, uh, check him out in my, uh, the link uh, below. So, oh, one of my good buddies, Brian B, double B in there. Appreciate the uh, support there, big guy. All right, so let's see what else we have. So, all right, so let's do the final, let's do the final giveaway. So again, this is gonna be, have a little bit of uh, something to do with one of my more um, recent reviews and I'll keep an eye on this and uh, Jason who's kind of monitoring things he can keep an eye on it as well but I've only got one of these two to give away right now and again this is kind of like one of the the challenge coins and maybe what I'll do is for the other guys who won the the booklets I'll include one of my little coins and stuff too these are just the the challenge coins so if anyone is interested in in these you can shoot me an email and, and let me know but for the two who won the um, uh, the two little booklets before, I'll include one of my my coins with that as well. So I'll I'll include one of mine with uh, with uh, the one from thirty three books as well. So all right, so here's the question. This is regarding a um, a review I just did not too long ago. So I did the an interview um, with the guys at Four Gate Whiskey, um, uh, Bill Straub and Bob D'Antoni. And they just produced a uh, a new whiskey, Four Gate whiskey, uh, bourbon that they that they've got uh, finished. My question is, in the finishing aspect, what type of and this is a little bit tricky, but what type of cask uh, was it that they finished their uh, whiskey in? And I need it to be basically specific. So the first one to answer that um, will get this coin. So I'll watch. And Jason can keep an eye on. We'll see what uh, what the answer is. Not yet. Not yet. It's it's very it's very specific. So, um, nope, it wasn't finished in the can't remember type of cask. This is a little, it is a little bit of a, a tricky one. So Brian got it. Brian Baltazar, Sherry Rum Cask. You got it. So clearly someone was paying attention. So one of my good buddies, he was paying attention. Actually, 
somebody who was the the least that I thought would get this would have been him. So I don't even have to mail this. I can just give this thing to him. So he'll appreciate he'll appreciate that. So no, so it was so it was originally a um, Oloroso Sherry uh, cask that was then sent off to um, another uh, place where they then finished it, finished their rum in it, and then basically dumped that, sent it back, and they finished the uh, whiskey in a uh, Oloroso Sherry and rum cask. So it was all in in one cask. So good job, Brian. I'm um, I'm amazed for the <laughs> for the most part so good job bud uh i don't even have to mail it so i'll give you that and one of my other one of my other uh things so all right so i guess with that being said so we're all wrapped up so again you know like subscribe you know let me know your thoughts on kind of what i'm doing with the with the channel and again richie you know thank you uh so much for uh providing these samples i mean this was absolutely um, you know, fantastic. I was, I'm very, very happy to, to have had the opportunity to, to try so many, uh, fantastic pours. So like subscribe again, I've got, again, this will all be linked in the description below. So if you're interested in any glasses, challenge coins, you can shoot me an email. I've got links to the glasses. Um, you can check out Dave's company, 33, uh, books. He's got some different cool things, uh, there as well. Um, if for some reason you're interested in supporting or contributing the channel, again, I'll have linked in the description below to my, uh, to my Patreon page. So thank you again for, uh, everybody for joining, uh, more importantly, Richie, again, thank you so much for, uh, the samples, uh, couldn't, um, you know, be more grateful to have the opportunity to do it. So, um, so with that being said, and like I say, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers everyone and thank you for joining me tonight.